Welcome to Spotlight on Freedom. I'm Hannah Catherine Smith, and with me today is Catalina Love. Catalina, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So we're talking about freedom. What do you think are some of the biggest issues that are threatening our freedoms as Americans today? Gosh, well, coming from the People's Republic of Illinois, you constantly feel like individual liberty all across the board is is under attack. And, you know, a couple of years ago, we looked at things like cancel culture. You see what's going on today with Joe Rogan being kicked off. Freedom of speech is under attack. Twitter censorship. Before it was, you know, our guns and just things that Democrats like to attack us on all the time from a constitutional perspective. But now it's like things that people on both sides of the aisle, this isn't even Republican or Democrat anymore. This is a constant threat on the the individual rights of, of a human, of, of people. And my mother came here from Guatemala and, you know, I grew up with stories of what it's like to live in a country where, you know, freedom of speech and just your everyday rights are are basically not even existent. And and that's a threat to liberty individually, but also when it comes to an economic perspective. When you have, in order to have a free enterprise system and live and prosper from an economic perspective, you have to have individual rights and freedom so that you can define your own destiny. And I look at the the culture wars and the cancel culture and how the woke mobs just try to destroy every industry. They're in everything. You look at, you want to watch sports, they have, you know, an issue with that. Uh, you have corporate corporations now getting involved in, in politics. And ultimately, that's a direct attack on our free enterprise system from an economic perspective as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's all encompassing. Um, I do believe like cancel culture and and these these threats on individual liberties, especially freedom of speech, are probably the worst thing. But then also look at what happened during COVID, the unconstitutional lockdowns. Coming from a small business family, you know, we saw so many people, especially in the area where I'm running, Illinois as a whole, people were devastated from an economic perspective because they weren't allowed to operate. Mm -hmm. How was it that, you know, what was considered essential was uh, chosen by a greater force where churches were shut down? Right. You know, who, who got to choose that? You have restaurant owners who can never recover because of what happened. Mm -hmm. um, kids going back to school and they're ha they have to be masked up now with the vaccine passports. These are all such a threat to freedom. And if we don't stop it now, if we do not continue to allow this to happen, the powers that be and the radical left will continue to chip away at each of those freedoms. It's no longer going to be things like, you know, FOID cards and gun control. This mm -hmm. is now what you can read, what you can say what's being censored now and and we need to fight back right so we hit on a lot of issues there yeah. and certainly here in washington dc yeah. where we are right now i yeah. mean we're seeing restaurants shutting down left and right after this vaccine mandate has been put into place and it's it's truly heartbreaking to see uh this liberal elite making decisions on whether or not people are able to participate in society so i'm happy that you hit on that but i want to uh, take what you said about being the daughter of an immigrant mm -hmm. um and why that freedom is so important you explained it a little bit but why do you think that progressives miss that story that so many immigrants Immigrants themselves or children of immigrants seem to grasp fully? I think the biggest, and that's a great question, I think the biggest issue is that they just simply don't understand, right? They didn't grow up with at least some people, because if they did grow up with those stories, believe me, they'd be fighting vehemently against what's going on and against government oppression. Uh, because, you know, I grew up with stories where my mom would go to college and, you know, people would be threatened or killed in front of her because they disagreed with something that the government was doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is that was a real, real life for her. And when you grow up with those stories of not only from an individual liberty perspective, but also, again, opportunity and what what you can accomplish when you live under freedom and what our what our country and what our flag stands for. When you grow up with those stories of what the opposite is, it's um, it's really eye opening. I had the opportunity to live in Central America. I, I've seen it firsthand, mm -hmm. but also have traveled, have had have been blessed with the opportunity to travel all across the world. World, and you know, from Africa to Europe, and there is a huge difference between what 
who we are and what we stand for and what always made us different because of our founding principles and our founding fathers to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always say that even on our worst day, we're still the greatest country in the world. But it's not going to be that way when you continue to see, again, the rising crime rates, oppression, both um, culturally and economically. And unless we turn the ship around, uh, we'll be lost. But also, you know, I grew up with stories um, with World War II veterans, um, you know, my, my uncle fought in Vietnam. And when you have people who tell these stories firsthand of what, of what they saw and what they were fighting for it, at one point, you realize that there is a heavy cost of freedom. Mm-hmm. And again, I truly just don't believe that the, the far left or even millennials now understand the, the grave cost of that. And, and every time that individual liberty is being stripped away, what we're giving up. Right, right. Well, it sounds like what you're saying is the big crisis right now in the United States is that we're not listening to people who have already lived it, Um, whether it was those who came before us or people from other countries. And that's Mm -hmm. that's truly terrible to see that we could be repeating history when we have no excuse because of these stories. So final question for you, Catalina, you are so passionate about freedom and individual liberty. Uh, We here at Freedom Works are all about a call to action and, you know, getting fired up about something and then actually doing something about it. Yeah. So you're you're doing something about it. <laughs> Tell me a little I bit about to. that. <laughs> you know, I, I believe that, you know, we all have a, a purpose. And um, when you are passionate about something, you know, I'm fiercely passionate about this country and people have served in far greater ways than I ever will. I consider it more of a civic duty to run for office. You know, I see what's going on in my state. I saw what was going on in in the country. And if this is my way of stepping up and saying, well, I I know I can, I'm gonna fight for this. I know what matters. And I hope to bring something to the table uh, from a, a servant leadership perspective. And, and fight for values and fight for the constituents and what matters to them. You know, unfortunately, a lot of politicians don't understand the everyday plight of Americans. They come here, they're here for 30 years. They lose touch with the kitchen table issues and what really matters to people and what's going on. And I hope to be a powerful voice, not only for the district, district but nationally uh, on these issues. We need lions in Congress now. We can't continue on this path without fighting for for what we we stand for and being principled and making sure that what we're contributing as as a a people is positive for the future of this country. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.